Rose was a kind woman. She baked cookies for her neighbors and volunteered at the local library. But Rose was getting older. Her mind wasn't as sharp as it used to be. She had dementia. Sometimes Rose forgot things, simple things like where she put her keys or what day it was. Rose's husband, John, had passed away a few years ago. He had always taken care of their finances. Now, Rose was alone. She struggled to manage the bills, the house, even her own checkbook. She felt lost and confused. She missed John terribly. Life was becoming very difficult. Rose's children lived far away. They called her often, but they couldn't be there every day. They worried about her, especially her declining mental state. They knew she needed help, but Rose was a proud woman. She didn't want to burden her children. She insisted she could manage on her own. One warm spring day, everything changed. A man knocked on Rose's door. He had a friendly smile and a name tag that said Mike. Mike was an exterminator. He offered Rose a free inspection for termites. Rose, being trusting and forgetful, let him in. Mike seemed nice enough. He chatted with Rose as he inspected her home. He asked about her family, her late husband. He listened patiently as she repeated stories she had already told. Rose felt comfortable with Mike. He seemed genuinely interested in her. Mike started coming by more often. He always had a reason, a follow-up inspection, a special discount, a new product he wanted her to try. He brought her cookies, helped her with groceries, even drove her to doctor's appointments. He became her confidant, someone she could talk to and rely on. What Rose didn't realize was that Mike was manipulating her. He was taking advantage of her vulnerability, her failing memory, her loneliness. He saw an opportunity in this frail, trusting woman, an opportunity to make a lot of money. Mike's visits became more frequent, his services more expensive. He convinced Rose she had a severe termite problem, that her house needed extensive and costly treatments. He inflated prices, invented problems, even billed her multiple times for the same service. But Rose, lost in the fog of her dementia, didn't understand. She trusted Mike. He was her friend. He wouldn't lie to her. As the months went by, the money started disappearing from Rose's accounts. Large sums transferred directly to Mike's company. Money that should have lasted her years, her life savings gone. But Rose didn't notice. She didn't check her bank statements anymore. Mike told her it was safer if he handled her finances. She believed him. While Rose struggled to remember basic things, Mike was living the high life. He used Rose's money to buy a brand new truck, a luxury watch, designer clothes. He took lavish vacations, dined at expensive restaurants, and showered his wife with extravagant gifts. Mike's wife, Sarah, knew where the money was coming from. She saw the designer handbags, the jewelry, the sudden increase in their lifestyle. She questioned Mike, but he brushed her off. He told her it was from a big business deal, a lucky investment, but deep down, Sarah knew the truth. She chose to ignore it, blinded by the comfort and luxury it afforded her. Back at Rose's house, the treatments continued. Expensive, unnecessary treatments. Mike was bleeding Rose dry, draining her life savings, her future, all for his own greed. And through it all, Rose remained oblivious, her mind lost in the fog of her illness, her trust in Mike absolute. Mike's greed knew no bounds. He had already stolen tens of thousands of dollars from Rose, but he wanted more. He saw that Rose's house, her only asset, was paid off. He devised a plan, a truly despicable plan. One day, Mike brought Rose some documents to sign. He told her it was just paperwork for the termite treatments, a formality. Rose, trusting as ever, signed the documents without reading them. She had no idea what she was signing. The documents were not for termite treatments. They were power of attorney, giving Mike complete control over Rose's finances and assets. He had tricked her, stolen her signature, her life savings, her home, everything. The betrayal was complete. Mike had taken everything from Rose a vulnerable woman who trusted him. He was a predator, and Rose was his prey. But Mike's days of luxury and deceit were numbered. He had made one crucial mistake. He had underestimated Rose's children. 